What is up, locker heads? This is gonna be a video about getting started in the storage locker buying world. Let's do this. Okay, so you want to buy storage lockers. Let me give you some tips. I'm not a pro, I would say. Well, I'm technically professional because this is my pr profession. But I'm not a veteran. I'm like intermediate. I've been doing this for like four, it's going on four years now, actually, which is really impressive. That's the longest job I've ever had. Well, no, I did work at... I did work at an antique dealer for five years. So, this is the second longest job I've ever had, but it's probably going to be the longest job I've ever had because it's not a job to me. I just love doing this. It is my favorite thing in the entire world. I have to tell you, I love being able to do this um, just as much as I love how much you guys support me. And Alyssa on YouTube, we love all your support. Thank you guys. So, you're thinking about buying a storage locker right here. Hmm. Let me give you some tips that I never got. I had to learn out, learn it the hard way uh, when I was doing it in the beginning. Number one. The best thing you should do and the most important thing you should do is learn how to sell items before you ever buy a storage locker. Because you can buy the best storage locker in the world, but if you don't know how to sell the items... It's not good at all. So, f and then also you can also, you know, you might have a little bit of knowledge of like, oh, I sold some stuff on eBay. But when you really deal doing this, especially when you're doing a high volume of eBay, you really, I like eBay specifically, but there's also other sites. But eBay is my main one. But you have to learn just like the ins and outs. Like, you got to learn how to open cases when somebody doesn't pay. Or... Or, like, make sure that you're not getting screwed over in a return or this or that. Because, like, so there's people that try and do return requests and they never send the item. But then they get the refund because you didn't respond the right way. But, and then if you don't, if you don't open a case and, like, when somebody bids. Say they bid $50 and they win the auction. And they don't pay. You still get charged until you open a case and they close the case. You still get oh, and then if you never if you never open the case, you'll always gonna have you're always gonna have to pay that fee. So you really need to learn how like the platform works. Each platform like eBay, um, Craigslist, Etsy, Top Hatter, uh, Close Five, all those other you know local buy and sell groups. Learn the rules for those because I run a per I personally run a buy and sell group, and I've banned three thousand people from the group. Of only 5,000 people. Because people do not follow the rules of the group. I mean, I'm I'm not a hard ass at all in life. I'm very easy going. But, like, there's very simple, clear rules that are right on the page as you open it up. And these rules weren't there originally. We had to put, add them because people were asking us, like, can you please uh, do something, like, control this group, blah, blah, blah. So, like, you know, we had to add, like, little things. It's things you should learn if you're going to be selling on those type of things. Like, a lot of play groups have no more than five listings or four or five listings a day because it spams it and it pushes people's stuff down so then other people's stuff can't get seen. The best thing to do is create an album in one post and bam. And then there's, uh, like, always put a price. Because a lot of times people get into arguments and, you know, it's a local group, most of these groups. So the person could live next door or a few blocks over and then get mad at you and then come shoot you. I, I mean, I, I say it a little bit in jest, but uh, you know, there's crazy things do happen in this world all the time. So i rather people have a clear price and if somebody doesn't like it, they see the price right off the bat. It doesn't become like, well, what's your offer? And then you offer somebody something they say, oh, that's insane. And then it turns into a big fight. So... You know, you just want to learn your, like, your, uh, your platforms. And if you're going to use Craigslist, please bring somebody with you. Please, please, please bring someone with you on Craigslist. I have met some really weird people on Craigslist that had no intention of ever buying anything from us. But they, they, I don't know, they're just weird. Some people are very weird. Um, almost maybe like... And, oh, there's still a lot of Craigslist scams where they say, Oh, well, I'll give you this check. You cash it and you bring me a $200 change when you bring me my item. Well, what happens is they do that and then the check 
bounces eventually, and then you're negative money, and you just gave them $200 and an item. So, I, that's never happened to me, because I read, uh, when I when I started this, I read a lot of tips about Craigslist, because I had never used it before, so I made sure, I made sure I never did, because my cousin almost did that once, and I said to her, no, 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 do not do that. So, if you're going to meet somebody from Craigslist, I really suggest bringing somebody with you and meeting in a public parking lot or even in a public place if you don't feel that safe. Um, a lot of times I suggest too, which is something I learned from a buy and sell group, is especially with like sneakers and uh, like MacBooks and more, and, and more like, uh, like especially in urban areas, um, there's a lot of counterfeit money. So what you want to do is meet by a bank and bring the money inside and check it and make sure it's not counterfeit. And yeah, so that's that. Um, eBay, it's a great place, but learn your eBay. I've been selling on eBay since I'm 15 years old through my mom's account when I was 15 to I think I was 18 when I finally was able to open it really myself. I don't remember. Oh, because yeah, the PayPal and the bank account and everything. So I've been selling, but I've been selling since I'm 15. And what I used to do... I was my little entrepreneur, Corey. I used to buy really big lots of Star Wars toys. If you can see over here. Star Wars toys. I used to collect them a lot. Uh, I collect pop vinyls now. But I did sell my collection a while ago. But what I did when I was building my collection originally. Was I used to buy big lots of like 40 or 50 figures. Because um, you get them usually for like 2 bucks a figure. And then I'd keep the ones I didn't have. And I'd resell the other ones individually, which was a pain in the butt. But, but, you could sell them back in the day for like five or six, seven bucks a piece. So, you know, it wasn't the most profitable thing in the world. But it paid for me to be able to buy more big lots of Star Wars figures and get some of the figures I wanted that I didn't have. And I ended up, when I finally ended my collection, I remember counting it. It was like 300 and something figures from like the 80s and 1995 to, two, I think it was like up until Phantom Menace, so 1999. I stopped collecting in 2000, and then I sold my collection in 2007, something like that. Whatever, that, I'm going off on a tangent over there. But I knew eBay a little bit before I started this, and... I had to learn on the fly a lot of, like, the nuances of it and, like, uh, the pains that that could be, like, if if somebody buys something for you, I think I just went over this, but if somebody buys something for you for 50 bucks, make sure you open a case because you're going to lose your five bucks, um, and that's just knowing your platform, and, like, you know, all the ones have all their different thing like you know rules and this and that so just make sure you know your platform before you ever buy a storage locker because when you just buy one and you start doing that you're you might end up losing money um just by not knowing the rules and stuff like that or getting you know or getting scammed or whatever so you just go on youtube look up like ebay scams or or craigslist scams or you know even google just look that up make sure you know all that and then also if you don't if you're not very familiar with them go on google or youtube and just you know type how do i learn how to use google or how do i learn how to use uh ebay or whatever it is and it should really help you out i know i've used it in the past before to help to solve some problems okay so you familiar familiarized yourself with the platforms of selling the items that is good now you want to buy a unit here are some of the tips i'm going to give you i'm not going to give you all the tips because it is a very individualized thing because if you're just going into it to like make money like i don't know if you're going into it to just try and make as much money as you can that's going to be your style i go into it i love what i do but i also i have a passion for like certain things and it makes it easier for me to do it when i go into like you know when i buy stuff that caters to my passions but some people, their passion is money. For me, it's not. For me, it's... I just love... I love to be able to do something I love. So, I'd rather just do that. So, I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks, though, um, for when you're starting out. First thing is find out where the auctions are going to be. And then find out 
through there's a bunch of different ways you can find them local newspapers usually have them in i th- what i don't remember what section i haven't looked up a live auction in a long time but newspapers lo- local newspapers usually have them it's not usually in like new york times or anything like that but it isn't like the no- local ones like ours is like the ridgewood times um you could also google storage lockers in my area and they're like some like that's how i found my first auction was i googled it and um oh auction cheer came up which is a little local place that does all, all the stopping stores in my area and all the storage posts in my area um it's run by a guy named don bader he's a really good guy hold on i gotta adjust myself but yeah so you could google uh storage auctions in my area and uh some you know it should show you some different places or you can also use storage treasure or you know storage battles or bit 13 or storage auctions.net there's a bunch of different online ones you could use but like storage treasures as well um and i think a bunch of the other sites also have live auctions that they take some of them even take pictures of but you could go there live like you have to go there live to bid um there's a few of those i know so those are like three of the best ways to do it there's also the the least the least best way is that even a thing the worst way but that wasn't going with my my mojo but the worst way to do it in my opinion but it is a good way um especially like more in like a rural area is you uh google like storage storage uh what are they called storage facilities and you call up the storage company and you find out when they're having their auction because a lot of them list it only in like the local papers like i was saying so say you're from queen like i'm from queens in long island i'm not gonna be able to get their local paper paper all the time so the best thing for me to do is call up out there and and find out when they're gonna have their auctions and i'll be able to go and that's the best way so you found your auction you found it like i'm gonna go to this one this is gonna be my first locker auction that was me uh what almost four years ago and we finally go and i had no idea that it was a 200 dollars deposit i was like what the hell is the deposit i didn't know there was sales tax on it stupid me and this place didn't have it but the auction i went to the week after had um also a 10 percent auction fee so some places have that you want to really when you do call make sure you you're uh you ask them like what their policy is because like stop and store it's a 200 dollars deposit you get that back when you're done cleaning the room out though so that really isn't a big deal but when you're going you have to like try and calculate what you're gonna have to bid with so you know i went with like i think it was like 550 bucks or five something but really it was only 350 but really less than that because we also had to add in the tax because at the time we didn't have a tax ID. So you have to try and add these things in when you're going. So when you do get to the auctions or beforehand when you're calling up saying, hey, when's your auction? And they're like, it's uh, October 4th, Alyssa's birthday. And uh, you say, what's your what's your deposit policy? What's your auction fee policy? And well... The tax ID you should do yourself because they they don't really. That's like your own problem, but uh, so let's say they tell you, it's a two hundred dollar deposit and we charge the ten percent. So now you have to factor that in when you're bidding. Bam, you figured it all out. How much you need, or if you do it online, it actually tells you. Um, online, it actually tells you on the the page what the policy is for that facility also like tell you they they tell you how much time you have to clean out and everything blah 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 this is important this is a really important one make sure you bring like a lot of locks i'm serious because i went to my first locker auction i brought one lock i want two rooms doesn't seem like a big deal until i had to pony up 15 bucks for a lock at the facility because it was like in the not that the place was in the middle of nowhere. There was actually Home Depot across the street. But I was so excited. I bought my first unit. 
I wasn't going to run all the way across the street to Home Depot. I spent the 15 extra bucks on a lock that cost $2. But, so if you bring it, just make sure you bring enough locks. And if you're doing live auctions, when you get to that room, when they cut that first lock, if, if they cut that first lock, a lot of places they pre-cut it because they have to take pictures or whatever and go through the stuff sometimes. But, um, smell the room. Smell the room. This is the biggest, well, second biggest thing. That's the most important. If you go to a live auction, smell the room. If episode 21, which was recently filmed, would have been a live auction, I would not have bought the room. Yes, we did good on the room. There was a few suitcases with some nice clothes that were clean and everything. But the majority of the clothes in the room were dirty. I don't know who puts dirty clothes in storage, but the clothes were dirty and smelled, and the whole locker smelled like body odor and feet, and it was gross. So smell the rooms if you're going to live auction online. You're not going to have that luxury. Uh, one thing I was going to say about online as well, if you're if you're starting out and you're buying online, you know, make sure you're trying to buy, make sure you buy stuff you know you can sell, like. There's been rooms where it's like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, that would be great. I'm going to try and buy this room. But, like, the old storage locker, Corey, buyer, probably would have bought it and then been screwed over. Because, like, I, I almost bought a room full of kitchen, like, commercial kitchen products. Like, you know, there was a, a dishwasher, uh, a slop sink. The, what do you call it? The condiment area? Where are the... Where you put, like, the pre-cut uh, tomatoes, lettuce that you put on burgers and stuff. And, like, a hot top. The, you know, the one for, like, bacon, egg, and cheese if you live in New York City. Bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Um, but, yeah, it has the flat top, but it has, like, the sides. Whatever. There was, like, a little commercial thing. It was probably for, like, a deli. Like... Yeah, it's probably good profit. It wasn't that expensive. I probably could have doubled my money. But at the same time, I have no connections in the restaurant industry. I would have to sell it. I'd have to store it. And you have to factor all that in when you're doing it. Because, like, I don't have a big truck. I have a small, not small. It's a normal size, like, uh, cargo van. It's an Astro van, actually. So it's a little shorter than, like, a cargo van. But it is, like, a van van. It's not a minivan or anything. But... I couldn't fit all that stuff in there, so I'd have to rent the truck, then I'd have to store it, and then this and that, and you have to factor all that in, because you can buy whatever, if you don't have the place to put it, or it's going to cost a lot more to store it, you have to factor all of that into your your stuff, so when you're starting out, you want to buy stuff, in my opinion, you want to figure out if you're going to like it, so you're better off buying smaller rooms, like 5 by 5 maybe a 5 by 10 you know, I made sure you have a place to store stuff, because if you don't have a place to store stuff, and you're doing this, it, it could be a headache. I mean, I, I'm a little backed up here, but it's not that bad. But I've been in places where I bought a big room and I had I had two storage lockers, my dad's garage, and then my room was completely filled, and my and my apartment was completely filled with shit because I had nowhere to put it. It was a big thirty by thirty room, greatest room ever. I love the room, not complaining, but it was. It was tough, especially we were only doing it for, at that time, a few months, I don't know, about a year. But, you know, I didn't factor in the fact it was going to cost however much. Like, we ended up profit. Like, our profit was pretty nice. But it cost a lot of money to store everything and every, this and that. So you have to make sure you know what you're, what you're getting into. So that's why, I, if I say, if you're going to try this out, like, say you're, you're not, like, you're, like, on the fence. Like, oh, I'm thinking about trying it. I don't know, though. It looks fun. It looks something like I'd be interested in. Start small, because if especially if you're on the fence, if you're like I, I'm going in, I'm doing this is what I'm doing, then do it. But if you're like someone who's like I don't know, I might want to do this. You should really start small because if if you end up not liking it and then you get stuck with some big ass unit and whatever, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a headache for a while. Or you're gonna have to pay more money to dump everything or whatever it is. So I would suggest starting smaller. Buying five by fives, five by tens, um, figuring out if you like it. And on that note, wait, let me see if I can. I think of a few more tips for you guys. 
Oh, be friendly with, in my opinion, one of the best things, though, is be friendly with the workers at the facilities. Um, you know, they deal with a lot of, they deal with a lot of customers throughout the day that aren't happy about their storage lockers being sold because they couldn't pay. And they get a lot of heat. So, in my opinion, if you're nice to them, usually they'll be nice to you, too, because a lot of the guys are dicks to them. So, be nice to them. Uh, it'll actually help you out in the long run, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, they'll make your life easier. You'll make their life easier. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, if I come up with or remember or whatever, anything else, I'll make a second one of these. But these were just a few tips for when you're starting out, how to start. Um, yeah. So, I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.